Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca and today we are going to be going through my May TBR. So right before we get into this, I just want to say a couple things. Number one, thanks for 200 subscribers. Like, what? <laughs> because I tweeted out yesterday that I had like gained like five subscribers in a day, which was like odd for me. And so I was at 199 and I was like, oh my God, I'm so close to 200. And so I tweeted out, hey, does anyone have a friend? And now I'm at like 219 and I just love this community because they're just the best. <laughs> and so, yeah, so if you're new here, hi, welcome. <laughs> and yeah, thank you for subscribing. <laughs> Last month, I had seven books on my TBR and I said that it would be a bit of a struggle. So here are five of them plus a Skybound Storm by Sabbath here and The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Clune and I will discuss them in my wrap up but did I succeed? Kind of. <laughs> so I did read The House in the Cerulean Sea, A Sky Beyond the Storm, Wind Witch, Fabulous Gate, Fool's Errand and the Rule, and Rule of Wolves but I didn't finish The Wild Ascension. I have started it but I haven't finished it but I'm giving that to myself because it was a busy month. And also, I definitely could have finished this TBR, except for the fact I went I went off TBR, guys. I went off TBR. I read two books that were not on my TBR, and it put me behind, and I was just looking for a punishment, obviously, but I'm not giving myself one because I started them all, okay? My game, my rules. If you're new here and haven't seen how this works before, I will leave the playlist to them, link down below, and I also always have the rules listed out in the description box. So, let's get into it. Okay, so let's see how many spins we have to do this month. Nine spins. Spin number one. Seven. An adult fantasy. Okay, so nine spins this month, which is a lot. And I have exams until the 14th. And I'm making it worse because Adult Fantasy was the first pick and I've decided to read The Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson, which also means that I have to finish The Well of Ascension first, which I have still like 600 pages in. Why am I doing this to myself? I'm making it harder. Why am I making it harder? <laughs> but The Hero of Ages is the third and final book in the first Year of Mistborn trilogy. As far as I know, Well of Ascension does end on a cliffhanger, so I'll probably be glad that I have this on my TBR hopefully. This series follows a world where there is these magic powers which are controlled by metals and if you can control one metal you are misting and if you can control them all you are misborn. And this guy called Kelsier is trying to get a group of people together to take down the Lord Ruler who is like this bad guy who's been ruling for like a thousand years and it's just a terrible time for everyone. <laughs> and he comes across a girl called Vin and discovers that she is also misborn and so she also gets dragged into this. So, I'm a fantasy. Spin number two. A 10. A big book, which is a book with over 500 pages. So, spin number two was big book, right after I put the Hero of Ages on my TBR. For this one, I'm going to choose The Devil's Thief by Jason Maxwell. So, that was actually one of the books that I went off TBR for. I read the Last Magician, and I really loved it. And I wanted to get to the second one, but I was like, uh, TBR, and also the fact that the audiobook wasn't available to me and all of that. So I have the ebook of it on script and also the audiobook for it on script. So I'm excited to get to it and see where the story goes. And I know the third one is now out, so that's also fun. <laughs> but also it's like 700 pages and I just put like another 700 page book on my TBR and I don't know why I'm doing this to myself. So The Last Magician follows this girl called Esta and she has this power to control time and it takes place in New York and kind of magic is dying out because there's this group that are trying to stop it and so like if you go into New York with magic powers you literally can't leave or without it killing you. So she is tasked by her like kind of adopted father kind of <laughs> figure um, to go back to the 1920s and get this book which was stolen which he thinks can 
basically free everyone. And so that's what happens. Esther goes back to the 1920s and there, she like gets involved with all of this stuff. And I did really enjoy it. So I'm excited. And again, spin number three. Another seven. So that is a stop and a lowest rated. So for the third spin, I landed on lowest rated and I went through my Goodreads. The project by Courtney Summers is pretty low rated. It's like 3.5. It's one of my lowest rated books on my TBR. Um, I have seen a couple of people love it, um, but most people just seem very neutral about it. Like they're just like, okay with it. So that doesn't fill me with a lot of confidence, but it's my lowest rated. I am still interested in reading it anyway. As you can see, I have Sadie on my shelf. I did love that book, but I'm not expecting it to be like Sadie. I know that it's a very different one. So I'm going to give it a try anyway, and hopefully I will enjoy it. So the project, I believe, follows two sisters and their parents died, I think, when one or both of them were very young. And one of the sisters then went and kind of joined this cult called like the unity project or something like that and then the other sister is trying to kind of expose them and so she kind of nearly like goes undercover and she finds herself getting dragged into it and it sounds interesting but i'm keeping low expectations spin number four eight a lot of big numbers this month and that is a blank Okay, so the next one was a blank and I forgot that it was a blank and then I didn't spin it. So I'm going to do that now. <laughs> okay, so usually it's I pull a card and then I spin it and it's red or black and inside. But I forgot to do that. So I just brought it up on my iPad. I have one half is red, one half is black. And my two that I'm choosing between is the Poppy War, which that is a kind of like, well, it's kind of more orange, I think. But it's like a reddish cover. <laughs> And then also Fury Born by Claire Legrand, that is going to be my black option. So, red. <laughs> Can you see that? Red. Um, so, I will be reading The Poppy War. My TV is going to be so big. <laughs> I could have chosen like two really small books. Why didn't I do that? It's okay. The Poppy War is a kind of military fantasy book and it follows a girl called Rin who grows up really poor and her parents are i don't know i think her parents are dead so like the people who are looking after her are like trying to arrange like a good marriage for her and she doesn't want that so she goes to this guy and asks him to help her train to get into this elite military academy and against all odds she does actually get in and she is treated pretty poorly at the military academy and then i think in the second half it kind of shifts to the actual realities of war instead of like just learning about it so i know it's a hard read and i am very interested to getting to it anyway spin number five and that is a one so that is an adaptation we also have to spin the volcano so the volcano is currently at 80k you probably can't see it but i can that brings us down to 60k and it gives us a couple of spaces like the airplanes and all of that. Spin number five was adaptation and for this I'm going to choose Heartstopper volume four. I have actually already read it. I read them as they come out online <laughs> but I as soon as the physical volumes come out I also get them and I just like read it fully. So I'm gonna read that. There is a Heartstopper adaptation coming out. I mean, volume four isn't going to be there anytime soon, but it counts because the series is getting one. And I need something easy. It is a really cute graphic novel written by Alice Oseman, which follows Nick and Charlie as they first become friends and then they it blossoms into something more. And it's just absolutely adorable. A four. One, two, three, four. Color. Spin the wheel again and see what color we land on. Okay, so it has to be a blue book. So then spin number six was color. And for this, I landed on dark blue. And I really struggled to find a book that I have that is dark blue. In the end, I went on Scribd and I found the ebook for The Last True Poet of the Sea. I have been wanting to read that for a while. I've heard really good things about it. And I actually have no idea what it's about. Like actually zero. 
But usually I say, oh, I don't know what this book is about, but I have like some vague idea. I actually have no idea what this book is about. I've just heard people talk about it. Yeah, I've heard that it's like pretty hard hitting. Like, so we'll see. On to spin number seven. That is a second 10. First in a series. And again, we move the token over here up one. So we are now on 30 out of 100 years. So then the next one that I landed on was first in a series, which I did not want to land on. So I'm already starting the Poppy War and I'm also like in the middle of like five different series, probably more, probably more 10. So I want to finish them before I start any more, but I'm doing what the TBR tells me to. So for this, I'm going to go with The Empress of Salt and Fortune by Nevo. It's a really short novella because I need some novellas right now. I mean, I think it's just like, follows the storyteller as she tells a story about like, I'm guessing an empress. <laughs> but I've heard that it's like really beautiful, uh, like an appreciation for storytelling, I think. And it's short, which sounds good. And I know they're, they're not like direct continuations, I don't think, but they are like um, companion novels. So I'm counting it. Spin number eight. And that is a nine. And we land on color again. And our color this time, orange. Spin number eight was once again color, and this time the color is orange. And for this, I'm stretching it a bit. So I'm going for Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakraborty. It's like kind of orange. Like, it's orange enough for me to count it. So this is another 600 page book on my TBR. Why? 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 So this series it follows a con woman called Nari in 18th century Cairo and one day when she is off doing her usual uh mischief she accidentally summons a jinn warrior who then takes her to the city of brass because he says that she has these powers and she is like half jinn or whatever. I really enjoyed the first one I gave it four out of five stars and I'm very interested to see where the series goes as far as I know I'm there's a time gap between the end of the first one and this one. I think it's like five years. So I'm very interested to see why she's doing that and what it's going to mean for the story. So yeah, um, I'm very interested to see how the story goes. So that is for orange cover. Okay, so hopefully the last spin, we can't land on a seven, a 10, or the color space again. Five. And that is a small book, so a book under 400 pages. So then the final book that I'm going to talk about, and thankfully it is a small book, is Sight Witch by Susan Dennard. So I am currently rereading the series. I love this series, it is one of my favorites, and I'm enjoying it even more in the second time because there's so many things that I just did not pick up on. She has like left clues just everywhere and I love it. As I said, it is a reread for me, um, but it is pretty short. I think it's like 2.30ish. Um, and it's also the only book I own that has deckled edges and I don't know how I feel about it. I know that's a very controversial thing, but I've never seen a book with deckled edges until I bought this like last month <laughs> and it came and I was like, oh, deckled edges. And I don't know how I feel about it. This is not what a TBR is for, but like, I do like running my finger along it. Like that's very calming, but I feel like it might annoy me when I'm reading it. The Sight Witch is the two and a half kind of book in the Witchland series. It is necessary to read this before you read Blood Witch. I mean, you technically can read it without, but you will miss so much if you don't read this. This is so important to the story. This is like the third installment in the series. Uh, but people and publishers don't think of novellas as like being a like, necessary part of a series when this is most certainly a necessary part of the series and it really enhances the, th the actual third book. The Witchland series follows Safi who is a truth witch and this is a power that a lot of people would like uh, because the truce is coming to an end and war is about to break out and a lot of people would like to have a witch on their side who can tell when people are lying to them. But Safi doesn't let anyone know. Her and her thread sister, uh, Isolt, they both want to just like run away, escape from where they're living. And 
that kind of all stops one day when a blood witch uh, catches their scent and then starts tracking the two of them and so they kind of have to go on the run and so much has happened since then and this is very different from them because we follow we don't actually follow the main characters in there it is a bit multimedia so there's like some like drawings and like notes and all of that kind of stuff so there's kind of like three ish um timelines in here so there's one where we're following that is like way in the past where we're following one of these sight witches who can like kind of see the future then there is two that are like pretty close in time uh which they contain characters that we have actually met in the series and yeah I I do really enjoy this I gave it four stars when I first read it but I think it might be a five star on reread because that's actually what happened with Wind Witch that brings me to the end of this TBR so if I actually complete this all it'll be 4100 pages ish wait no it'll be more than that because I have to read the Well of Ascension it'll be about 4700 pages which is the most that I've read so far the most pages I've read was in March and that was 3700 so I would be adding another thousand on top of that I'm not saying that I won't do it because I love a challenge but also this is going to be very difficult <laughs> so there is the possibility of me doing a punishment next month which as always if you have any ideas for punishments I do have a couple like listed down as punishments um but I'm always open to more suggestions so you can like leave them but there is a couple of readathons which could help me out so the first one that I'm going to talk about is the Shrek readathon which is hosted by I read today um so I had a look at them the prompts and all of that and I think Sight Witch, The Poppy War and Heartstopper Volume 4 would cover all I think eight of the prompts and then the other one is Do The Thing-a-thon <laughs> Uh, created by Ashley from Frolic Through Fiction which that one is kind of just like you work towards your goals that you created at the start of the year so like a couple of these would fit into them so hopefully the two of those are like the third week of May and the fourth week of May so like literally right as soon as my exams are finished those kind of bring me to the end of the month so hopefully like reading sprints and all of that I will somehow manage to do this so thank you guys so much for watching I do hope you enjoyed if you did subscribe and I will see you all in the next one bye mm -hmm.